Amid fierce political competition between the PDP's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, and President Tinubu of the APC, a rivalry that's now gone beyond the shores of Nigeria, both sides appear to be working on gathering as much muck as they can, so that it won't be possible for either of them to find a loophole or any other way of getting off the hook. Each side is carefully laying landmines in the other's path in the hope that if their opponent steps on one, he and his team could be blown to smithereens as the tantalizing mystery of which way a US court and the Nigerian Supreme Court will jump draws inexorably closer. A victory in both will surely be the biggest catch of all. That is, if it's not complicated by Nigeria's political situation amid concerns about this country's weak institutions. So, what is the hidden dynamic here? Whose Achilles heel will it be? I'll be joined in the studio by the lawyer and PDP National Publicity Secretary, Debo Ologunaba. Also on the programme, they're calling it President Tinubu's Chibok moment, the recent mass abduction of somewhere between 24 and 34 students from the Federal University in Gusau, Zamfara State, barely a week ago. Part of the Kidnap for Ransom franchise that's growing every day across Nigeria. According to the authorities, 13 of the victims have been rescued, although some reports suggest that only seven have regained their freedom and at least two of them reportedly escaped on their own. Either way, it's clear that the challenge of insecurity continues to pose a big threat in this country. How is it that bandits and criminals now seem to make the rules in Nigeria? Why can't they be hunted down and defeated? What should be on the table to tackle this blight? I'll be joined in the studio by the public policy expert, Professor Usman Yusuf, who was the former secretary to the Chief of Defence Staff's committee that negotiated the release of the last batch of train hostages. Plus, we have analysis featuring a leading commentator who will reflect on the main events shaping Nigerian politics. I'm Charles Onyegolu, and this is Arise Primetime. Now, as you know, the starting gun in the race to lead Nigeria was fired during fiercely competitive elections in February. And that definitive round went to President Tinubu, who emerged top of the pile, according to INEC. That didn't go down well with his opponents, who headed to the election petitions court, where they lost again. So now they're striving and pushing at the final boundary, the Supreme Court. And one of them is also in a U.S. court, though at this point it is unclear whether this will help in their rivalry with the APC. Meanwhile, the president is getting on with the job in a country where tensions are dialing up higher and higher, with Nigerians at home struggling with growing insecurity, corruption, poverty, unemployment, skyrocketing inflation, and a currency that's in free fall. And all these shortcomings also being keenly watched on the world stage, a Nigeria that could be great but isn't that's failed to become an African superpower in its own right, a country that in a world where the decisive stuff is force, power and money has failed to shine and to shift the global headwinds to its benefit. Well, for more on all that, I'm joined now in the studio by the lawyer and the National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Debo Ologunaba. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Good evening, Charles. Nice Looking impeccable as always. Thank you. Want to look like you? <laughs> I yeah. like that. Yeah. I want to look like you. <laughs> yes, it makes two of us. So we'll start a mutual admiration club. Absolutely. Thank you. Now, your reaction, first of all, to attempts by President Tinubu's lawyers in the U.S. Mm -hmm. to prevent the release of the president's academic records from the Chicago State University, the PDP from you has released a statement today about that. Just summarize for us what's contained in that statement. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Charles. It's nice to be here again. I think what's in that statement is actually to situate the attempt by the lawyers of President Tinubu and, of course, by extension, the APC, to the extent appealing by a plea or making an application requesting that certain details regarding the president's academic records should not be released to the public. And there are two issues here. We are concerned, number one, that APC as a party has not made any statement to that effect. And that seemed to us consistent with the pattern of the APC in concealment, in accommodating, and condoning irresponsibility in public office. Now, back to the academic records. You recall at a, pu a public event some time ago, President Tinubu boasted and actually said, and for exactitude, because I don't want this thing where I'll be accused of misquoting, he said this. He said, I was one of the most recruited graduates of my university. Multiple honors, first class degree, and I have the reference point. That's the man saying, this is who I am. Now, for his lawyers, and I want to, I know, I would expect that he would dissociate himself from those positions. For any lawyer, to attempt to vitiate these comments is actually a disservice to President Tinubu and to Nigeria. The second part of this is that as a nation, we begin to ask ourselves, what do we want to be known for? In his book, Enes Renan, what is a nation? Describe what a nation state should be. That it's a space of people coming together and saying, this is what we want to be known for. If you are a public officer, obviously, you are a public person. And the people that you seek to lead have a right to know. In some situation, there might not be a law that obliges you to do that. But for moral standing, you must do that. And we'll give an example of that. And PDP has consistently showed the way in that regard. And mm -hmm. I give example. In the Code of Conduct Bureau and the Act, where public officers on getting to the office, you need to declare the asset, and when you're leaving, you will recall that President Umaru, late President Umaru used a PDP, voluntarily made public his asset. And following that step, you see governors of PDP Governor Shehima Kile of Oyo State did, and most recently, the governor of Zanfara State. I need to know which of the APC public officials have done that. And that tells you about the character of a party, about the people, who are they. Now, they seem to condone secrecy and concealment from the public the correct cause of a public official. So for us in that, we are saying number one is a disservice to President Tinubu, it's a disservice to Nigeria and to the international community because any country or the whole world should have records and be sure that when they're talking to a, a head of state, a president, they're talking to a person whose record they can view hmm. and that shouldn't be uh, available. And we are saying it's, a, it's an indictment on the APC as well as a disservice. And so we're calling on APC speak out right. on this issue. Right, okay, well that's, um, thank you for making that point clear. I saw that statement earlier and I think you've articulated what's in it uh, very well. You are of course a lawyer sure. and uh, you are clearly conscious of legal proceedings, yes. uh, but I understand the PDP is not a party to those proceedings in the US courts, but your presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, is flying solo sure. on that one. I in those circumstances, what's the latest that you can tell us about that case? Yeah. Generally, as, as a party, and again as a lawyer, mm. 
we're, we're cautious in making comments on ongoing proceedings. Mm. Because as we say in legal parlance, it is subjudice. So you don't want to make statements that go, go overreach what decision it might come one way or the other. However, I just articulated the need, the, in, the need for the public to know. And that is universal. Mm. Now, look at us in the United States. We're actually linking the crimes or the alleged crime, the indictment of the president's son to the president. And they're even commencing an impeachment proceeding and hearing on that. Mm. That is to say, look, when you are a public officer, there should be no go area in terms of your records. And so that is the point. Yeah. And so the rule of law should always predominate. It should, because we face a, a democracy is, a, mm. is embedded in that. It's openness, transparency. And that's where we're calling on APC. Mm. Come clean. This is about your candidate. This is a guy, the president of Nigeria. Yeah, well, you, and you, every, every, sure. ev every citizen has a right to know. We demand that. And we have said, give an example of President Musa. Yara, yeah, Umaru, yeah. But, but you said that it previously. Yes. Well, what I was asking you yes. is what is the latest in terms of that case? Where are things now? Right now. I'm not telling you to yeah, tell it's, us it's, what it's, the. It's, 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 just, just where, where are things. What we know right now, right. from what the record, the information we have, right. is that the court is now have taken in the argument. Right. Of President Tinubu requesting that certain part of the information should not be released to the public. And Atiku Abubakar has made justification through his lawyers mm. about why is this necessary. Right. One of the things they said in that in that coming from what I read was the fact that yeah, there are certain information that cannot be used in a court proceeding because it was a proceeding in Nigerian court. But I'm aware from the information we're hearing that those proceedings have been transmitted and is in possession of the appeal court in the Northern District of Illinois. So we are awaiting that. Right. The, the documents are in, we know. I so mean, when, when will the courts make a decision well, by? I, I, or, or they, they, they don't, they're not sort of saying no, that? I, I'm moment. sure um, the good thing about the American process is that it is quick, yeah. it is fast, and you cannot, you cannot stop it, mm. like we attempt to do something or stall it. You can't bring, uh, technicality to stop it. Mm. So we expect that in the next couple of days we should be able to get a right. position on that. Okay. So that all we're asking for, let us see. Yeah. And I think people should get this. This is not about President Tinubu as a person. This is about a proper process. Who are we as a nation? What should we be known for? Mm. Should we be known as people who can, whose records are shrouded in mystery? Or do we want to say, look, we have a president mm. or we have any public officers we can say you, this is who you yeah, are. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people would agree with you. Nevertheless, yeah. we have to admit that it's all getting bad-tempered again as, as the legal wrangle in that U.S. court mm -hmm. and later in the Supreme Court seem to be coming to a head. And the, the fact, of course, ineluctably so, is that you, as the PDP, mm. are happy to use the president's academic record as a political weapon. Well, I don't know. I don't, number one, clearly know. We are talking about the rights to know. This is not, PDP is not just saying that. Nigerians are saying that. No, no, we, we agree that, that so, people ought to know. No. But it, it's also working to your advantage politically, isn't I don't it? Know to about, try I, and raise a lot of dust. Charles, I don't this. know about raising a lot of dust. Is it? A legitimate request? If the answer is yes, then look, do you know we can stop this in one second? If the president were to come and say, you know what? Present my details. Right, but let me let and me then this matter will be off sure, by I now. understand. Then that. there will be no dust. Sure. But let me put let it another reference. way. Let yeah. me put it another way. How much is this US court issue something of a sideshow? to the much anticipated judgment of the Supreme Court? Or is it likely to have far reaching consequences for that apex court in this matter? For me, as a lawyer, what we're asking for as PDP is less the facts, least to what decision might be. I can't preempt the decision yeah, of course, in, the, yeah. in the US court or the Supreme Court, mm. because again, these are our subjudices. However, there are rules within the Supreme Court that allows for additional evidence 
in circumstances that they will consider judicially and judiciously. If it is relevant to the issue, if it is necessary, and above all this, Charles, what is critical is about democracy, mm. is about transparency, is about the right of the public to know, and the night that when you make, set yourself out as a public officer, then we that have voted, or those who didn't even vote for you, have a right to know. And I don't see a big deal. No, I, I totally understand that. Yeah. But, but what I'm trying to say is that your, you as a political party mm. that is in opposition to mm. the president and is a, an opponent to right. the president in that political arena, mm. you're trying to muster as much muck mm. as possible so that you make it impossible for the president to find a loophole that will keep him on as president. Is that a fair assessment? And you're hoping that this Chicago State University mm. affair will become his Achilles heel. No, Charles, I think you're, you're looking at it from the prism of, of being personal interest. No. No, no, no. I, I know the point you're no, making. Me. And, and I have conceded interest. that point. But no. I'm saying there's an additional point, which, is? which, which pot it could potentially be politically beneficial to you. And you're pressing that advantage. We are not pressing any advantage. We're asking for a fair question. But, like I said, mm. this whole thing you call political advantage can stop right now. President Tinubu has the right to stop it now and say, you know what, release it. And if it is released, wherever this, the facts leads, mm. then we go there. Yeah. If in the course of that, it becomes injurious to him, well, too bad. That will be his own uh, call. We are not seeking for that. We are interested in this country. We want this country to do well. We want to have leadership that can speak for us and that will not be incumbent and that cannot be black belt. Mm. That's what we're saying. And I think that's a fair question to ask what Nigerians are asking for. Indeed, the whole world is watching Nigeria. That Absolutely. Who are you mm. as a people? That's a good point. Are you point. a country or a nation mm. that conceals information? Or are you a nation that is willing to say, here we are, mm. and when mistakes are made, then correct it. Yeah. But of course, some say that knowing President Tinubu's people, the advice to you mm -hmm. and to Mr. Atiku and the PDP is to tread carefully lest you find landmines <laughs> in your path that could figuratively blow you all to smithereens. Well, I mean, it's a political war, okay, okay, isn't okay. it? Sadly, that if that is the dimension, I, I hate to imagine that is the case, mm. but if that is it, it will be unfortunate for us as a nation. We're not laying landmines. We're saying, keep it up. Mm. I don't think there's anything criminal about saying, let us see what's in there. But beyond the US court issue. No, can I just make yeah, this yeah, point? Of course. Go ahead. You know, in his book, um, Victor Fankrow, in Man's Search for Meaning, mm. says, a man who, can, who has any reason to stand for, can withstand anyhow. What does he mean? And put differently that he who have a reason to live for can stand anyhow. Hatiko Abaka stands for democracy. Those are the elements of democracy, openness. That's what he's asking for. There are no landmines. Well, I understand yet. that, but it's also his, his, you could argue that yes. it's his last shot, given, given his age, given the time lag that's likely to occur mm -hmm. if Tinubu emerges triumphant. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it could well be his last throw of I the like, dice. I like, I like this semantics. It could well be. That's your word. I'm not going to speak well, for that. Well, I'm only saying, well, I okay. mean, it saying could, what could, to many could, people seems fairly obvious. Well, fine. Those people are seeing that. I'm not seeing that. We're not talking about, we're talking about now. Sure. The future take care of itself. Right. So we're not gonna, I'm not going to sit down here and begin to, to demand about what could happen tomorrow or next year or four years from now. No. For now, what is the expectation of us as a people? Mm. What is the expectation of our leadership? The president, if he says, from what I read, mm. he says, look, I'm one of the best, I'm the brightest. I got honors, multiple honors. I'm distinguished. So you simply want to see the evidence to support you that. Just say so. Yeah. But, but beyond the U.S. court issue, do you, as a spokesman for the opposition PDP, yeah. that's yeah. challenging the um, victory of President Tinubu, mm. um, do you hold up much hope in the Nigerian Supreme Court, or is that cupboard 
pretty much bare as far as that again, goes. Again, each time, and this is a very, very important question, and mm. it's very important. The challenge of this country today is not so much about the courts. It's about institution. And the institution in this matter is the INEC. INEC has lost so much credibility. We have laws, we have guidelines, we have the electoral agreement that was celebrated. We were rejoicing. Mm. We brought beavers, we brought IRF, we brought procedures. Consistent with that INEC set of guidelines and rules to follow. And they, either by complicity, by corruption, or by deliberate sabotage, they sabotage that process. And now, the mark of any institution is about the integrity. Today, what is the worth of the word of Professor Mahmoudou Yakubu? It's zero in the eye of an ordinary man. And sometimes I try to say, can we challenge Professor Mahmoud if he's that popular and he believes in himself to do what I call integrity work of 100 meters in Abuja or in Kano or in Lagos or in the East, in any of the places where we had the elections? He was an embarrassment, that institution. And I'm sure in his closet, Mahmoud would have watched, wish he did something differently. That's why we have the cause being brought into this. Hmm. For, ordinarily, the court should just interpret. But because of this, the court is unwittingly brought into this storm that is unnecessary. So what we should speak as Nigerians to say, you know what? I let Professor Mahmoud Yakubu should be held accountable for all the crises, for all the insinuation going into the court. So it's not about, and I won't sit down here to begin to comment about what the Supreme Court may or may not do. Mm. I'm a lawyer, I respect that institution. Yeah, that's perfectly we said, understandable. We said, after the judgment of the Court of Appeal, the tribunal, then, we said, yes, we respect, we reject that decision, we respect it, and completely we reject it because it didn't sound to reason, it didn't, in our own view. Mm. And that's why we have, because Atiku Abaka is a Democrat who follows the rule of law, he's gone to the Court of uh, Supreme Court to ventilate that. Right. And we have over 50 grounds of appeal. So we're going to go into that. The outcome will be irrelevant. But leave that information that could be helpful in the course of that. So I would say, let's get the facts. And whatever it is, we'll follow it. Right. The consequences is different. Okay. But it's the fact that we need to go through it. And well, we, we've got about uh, two minutes or so left to this, to the end of this very interesting chat. I mean, I could, I could talk with you and, and listen to you forever, but let's just move away from the courts. Right. And let me ask you for your assessment of how President Tinubu and his team are getting on with the business of running Nigeria. Okay, I mean, it's not my assessment, it's my assessment of Nigerians. Well, your assessment. Well, you're you're the one right who's now. sitting here but talking my, my, to my me. My assessment is a reflection of what Nigerians. Again, it's just a mere comparison. You tell me one thing that this government has done for over 100 days. Nothing. One. And it is a litany of lies and propaganda. Come on. That is the integrity of a, of, of a government. You, you had the discussion with the airlines in the um, United Arab Emirates. You claim that it was immediate. You took CNN to debunk it. You went to the United States and the UN to say that at NASDAQ, the NASDAQ Industrial uh, Index, mm. you claimed that there had been a convergence on the exchange rate. But that's not correct. The I and E window, we know the arbitrage in between them. What is worse? Diesel today is about a thousand naira a litre. What does that mean? I wonder how you survive here because you are in operation 24-7. Now, what it means, manufacturing are closing down, unemployment is rising, more crime is coming in, petitions and everything. Now, what is the purpose of government? The purpose of government is the welfare and security. Of the, even from your int intro, there are more crises than we are talking about. Is she, is she work? Mm, moment. Moment. And there are some counter negotiating, non negotiating. That's not important. By any assessment, we're worse than we were when it took over. Okay. The that note, today is, we right. don't know. So you can't plan. They can't be planning. Right. But again, let me tell you, there are some. Very, very brief. Quickly. 10 seconds. Let me tell you. Thank you very much. In all of this, we must be able to do a comparative analysis between the PDP states and. 
the APC state. Well, we'll, 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 we'll leave that. But I can for tell you that. Yeah, it'll we'll leave that for another as, day. Yeah, very well, but it must be good and be nice to hear that. I was in a quiet bus state some three days ago, and you need to see. What the new governor there is doing, right. which is our rights agenda. Okay. Happy New well, Year. He's, he's, he's run a few sort of um, documentaries. Absolutely. So we've seen and some also of it. But, but I really must go. I want to thank you very much indeed for ver being very articulate and, and uh, taking us into your world and your sort of descriptions of what's been going on. Uh, the lawyer and national publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Debo Ologwaba. Thank you very much. Thank for you me. very Great much. Great to Charles. see you.